Hello, we are talking today about Calerpa and it's one of these algae that everybody is afraid of, a little bit afraid of anyway. Um, and there are some reasons why you might be afraid of them and it's not unfounded to actually have this position when it comes to Calerpa. But we're going to go through different Calerpas and um, discuss the pros and cons of them. So lots of people are getting more interested in macroalgae aquariums and that is fantastic. And the most common types of macroalgae you're going to be able to get, especially from online auction sites and things like that, are going to be the ones that grow the fastest. And that tends to be Calerpas. There are lots of different types of Calerpa. This one here is probably the safest and in my opinion one of the nicest Calerpa prolifera but there are other types. The one you just saw before was Calerpa racemosa uh, and these are the two that you're most likely to get hold of quite easily. Why would you add them to your aquarium? Well firstly they look stunning. Now you don't have to add them to your main display. You can add them to a refugium or your sump and they all do a similar thing other than looking great they'll help to reduce uh, nitrates, phosphates, ammonia, and all of the stuff that corals don't tend to enjoy in great amounts. And because of these benefits, lots of people are going towards this route now instead of the chemical removal of these nasties, we'll try and remove them in a natural way, which is a really good thing to do. I prefer using a natural remedy than a chemical remedy, and macroalgae seems to be a great way of doing this. As well as that, if you do have them in your main display, they'll provide a home for um, copepods, amphipods, things like gamma shrimp. And that can only be a good thing because as well as being part of the natural environment, they also provide lots of food for your fish. For instance, this um, silver belly wrasse doesn't get fed. You can see how fat he is. This bloke is surviving pretty much, and all the rest of the fish in here, they're all surviving practically off the natural things in the tank. You can see he just ate a little gamma of shrimp there. So you can see how this is a great thing for your fish because it provides many natural and wild foods for them. So there aren't many reasons why you shouldn't add calerpas or macroalgae in general to your aquarium. But specifically calerpas we're looking at today have a very bad rap and that is not unjustified. There's a thing called going sexual and that is the thing that everybody is afraid of when it comes to calerpas. So going sexual is basically a reproductive act on the behalf of these calerpa macroalgaes. Essentially it's one way that they can reproduce. Everything inside of them essentially dissolves, it gets released into your aquarium uh, or the ocean in, in obviously in the wild and that's how they reproduce. These little spores will go onto rock works and surfaces where they can regrow and then life continues. But on the internet, as of all things, there are many many fear mongery stories and not many success stories and that's because it's biased towards people who want to complain or people who want to scare others. So this is more of a success story. In my experience, Going sexual amongst Calerpa does happen, but it's not as scary and as dangerous as you might think. So here is a Calerpa race mosa. This is a massive clump and you can see it's gone white. Now this is the start of it going sexual. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not too worried about it because it does this about a day before it releases all of its spores. So essentially all you have to do is look at your tank every day and if you see your macroalgae going white, specifically the Calerpa, or in the case of Prolifera, it might go a little bit furry, then that's your warning sign that it's going to go sexual. So all you have to do in this case is remove the affected part. Now, if you don't remove the affected part, the next day, or within, say, 24 hours, it's going to release all of its spores, and yes, your tank will go a little bit cloudy. And I've had entire tanks go cloudy. It looks like a massive mess. However, my fish did not die, my corals did not die, and within 12 hours or so, with adequate filtration, it all returned back to normal. So the reality of things going sexual is, 
firstly, it's really easy to tell when it's going to happen. And secondly, if it does happen, then it's actually also not a massive problem. If you're overly worried, you can do a water change and add a bit of carbon to your aquarium, a bit of ammonia remover maybe. And doing these things tends to solve the problem. Now the next point on Calerpa's going sexual is the fact that I've heard of people saying that the algae have then grown from these spores in their display tanks uh, and I'm going to question that. Now it may happen, I'm not the only person in the world that's kept Calerpa, but I would say in the five years of keeping Calerpa of all different types, I've had them go sexual quite a number of times and I've never had them reproduce from sporulation in my aquarium. I've never had them pop up randomly in my aquarium from this event. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm just saying it hasn't happened to me. Um, and I've kept numerous different types of Calerpa, all of which have done this, and they've never reproduced this way for me in my aquariums. So I would say that's probably a very, very small thing to worry about in terms of keeping Calerpa. So another danger or potential danger of adding Calerpas to your main reef aquarium, if you're keeping mainly corals, is the fact that it can grow over your corals. This is actually something that does happen and it is something which you have to manage quite carefully. You can manage it quite easily, in fact, just by choosing the right type of Calerpa. If you're worried about growing over your corals i would definitely not go for race mosa that's this one or anything that looks similar to race mosa i would stick pretty much just to prolifera which is the grassy type macroalgae do grow over each other also so this one here is calerpa peltata it's just a smaller version of race mosa and you can see here it's growing through this um, grassalaria and that's essentially what it will do to your corals if you let it get out of control this is kind of true for most uh, macroalgae to be honest i mean all of these macroalgae in here they're all going to fight for space with each other and they're all going to fight for space within your aquarium for prime positions to grow so you have to be very careful with what you choose. It really depends on which direction you're going for with your reef tank. You can see here, soft corals and the occasional hard corals can exist quite nicely with macroalgaes, but um, I'd be a little bit careful over your decisions. And with emphasis on Calerpa, I would just steer away from everything except for prolifera if you're heavily into your corals and just want a little bit of macroalgae in your main display. So in general terms, as long as you manage your calerpa by pruning it or cutting it up into smaller pieces, so if one bit does go over, the whole section doesn't go up with it, um, and give it adequate environmental things like nutrients and lighting, they don't tend to cause too much of an issue. It actually has more benefits, in my opinion, than negatives. But essentially, it's just about not being lazy when it comes to your macroalgae. You have to treat it almost like a coral. Daily management of it, keeping it alive, feeding it, caring for it and pruning it and you'll notice and get to know its rhythm within your aquarium and um, you'll, you'll actually see it go sexual before it happens. I think most of the problems ha have arisen where people have a refugium with Calerpa in it and they just never open the door to have a look and they wake up and it's gone over without them noticing. So yeah that's kind of my synopsis of Calerpa definitely give it a try. If you want a really easy to keep one, go for the prolifera. You can see it can live and coexist with corals quite nicely uh, and it doesn't tend to go sexual very often. It's pretty stable and if it does, it's easy to spot. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, remember to leave a like and also subscribe to my channel to see more stuff like this. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.